All right. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Chuck, you want to kick us off or do you want me to start? Why don't you go ahead and do this overview and then we'll... Sure. So I just want to welcome... Just want to welcome everyone to our first TIM meeting of 2021. Hope you all had uh, happy holidays and uh, are having a healthy start to 2021. Um, so Steve could not be here today. Uh, he has a conflicting meeting, so I guess you're stuck with me. Um, I just want to welcome you all. Thank you again for your participation. Uh, I think 2020 was uh, had a lot of successes in terms of the uh, Beltway Tim team. So I guess this is our third year of this. And, uh, you know, this year we're looking to kind of capitalize on a lot of the successes that we had last year. And uh, we want to start engaging some more people from Northern Dolphin County. And I think we want to get more people from Perry County and Cumberland County involved as much as we can. And, uh, you know, working with Chuck this year. So I think we have a lot of good things coming down the pipeline, uh, a lot of exercises and a lot of training ahead. So um, just want to thank you again for your participation. Any ideas or suggestions that you have as a local responder, uh, please let us know. We want to try and tailor this program as much as we can to meet your needs throughout the region. So uh, you can either contact me directly um, at my email address, or you can email the planning at tcrpc-pa.org email address, um, either will come to me. So um, yeah, so with that in mind, Chuck, it's all yours. Thanks, brother. Again, everybody, welcome. Uh, glad you could take the time today. Um, as Kyle said, we're going to try to refocus just a little bit. And if anybody has any live issues, we'll bring them up now. And if not, we're going to talk about it. We're going to come up with a situation that we can talk through um, from everyone's perspective. I think everyone received, Kyle's trying to get that to advance. I think everyone perhaps has received this um, 2021 calendar. Um, that is how I went ahead and corrected it to the 9th and 11th from different from the one that you got for February. Um, we've decided right now we're gonna stop doing evening meetings as far as a normal uh, way. They, they, it says they've been unpopular. They've just been re really, weekly attended, not that they haven't been productive. Um, they, when we've caught just one new person in the evenings, they have been productive. But uh, we're gonna go daytime for regular meetings. And then when we have training, we'll go ahead and, and have an evening. So we're doing training in March, um, which we are. Um, and as far as right now, we're gonna do a little training on instant command and unified command at that point. Uh, when we're doing training, we will have an evening meeting. So there'll be a Tuesday, March 9th meeting, probably a March 9th evening opportunity. Uh, and then on the 10th um, for Lebanon and Hershey. I would encourage you to keep to take a look at this schedule. Um, nothing has changed except what I changed, the version you got. Um, is there anyone on here now that didn't receive that schedule? Uh, Chuck, uh, Dean Hooper, I, I don't, I don't recall seeing that. We will make sure that the schedule is reset to everyone. Um, yeah, it's on Chuck, the mailing I, I didn't, list. I didn't get it either. Okay. Um, sometimes that was by design. Um, oh, oh, oh! Thank you, Bart. We're up to thirteen. Um, <laughs> Let me just check participants. Let's go ahead to the next one. Anybody have any comments on, on that? We're going to try to go to training uh, every two or three months, and it will probably not be full blown. Here's a module of Sharp 2. Um, we're going to take the Sharp 2 stuff and, and incorporate some of the responder safety stuff and try to make this a uh, refresher for most of the folks um, and a means to uh, and generate a little bit of interest that people can then come out of that and go online and take the class or uh, participate in responder safety. Uh, any issues as you go between meetings, anytime you have something, please share them. Um, we're gonna, we really will refocus. Um, and number three says we really mean, we really mean that. That's not just blowing smoke. We'll refocus the agendas 
to meet whatever needs you have. So that if something comes up, um, Barton might, and, and might come up with some tough issue from the city, um, you know, we'll knock it out, whatever we got to do. And again, there's that always opportunity planning at tcrpc-pa.org. Um, that will get to uh, Steve Deck and, and Kyle Snyder. Any issues? Before we start this exercise, are there any issues at all that anybody has coming up that hasn't been communicated to me before or they want to discuss right now before we go into this exercise? Going once, going twice, okay. Um, the survey we did after the December exercise suggested a couple of things in particular. Uh, there was a great deal of interest in having some kind of a smaller exercise as part of most of our meetings, if not all. Um, and the other one was that we concentrate because that was kind of wide ranging and we tried to throw a bunch of different things uh, in that larger exercise, but that we focus on some very basic um, scene safety issues, re responder safety, quick clearance opportunities, and how do we communicate. Uh, so for this one, um, because of the area we were, and we were hoping to, to engender a little bit more, perhaps Perry County involvement. Um, our first incident box truck that was eastbound on 22, and this is just uh, west of Clark, west or south of Clark's Ferry Bridge, um, couldn't make that turn and tipped over uh, on a northbound 849, and is giving us a car slides into it. Now, I'm not specifically defining that, but let's think about that incident right there and then go to the next slide. So we have, I don't know if you guys, you guys probably can't see, but down there between Research Gun Shop and Gunsmithing was our first incident. And our second incident, fairly quick, um, up in Perry County, you're here just in time because we're going to mess stuff up for you, I think, in a couple of seconds. Uh, I've got a semi just jackknife across all four lanes blocked at this time. Um, I think a fairly natural thing that might happen um, because as the first truck tipped over, that meant we had a couple other vehicles that were going to head to Duncannon um, who had backed up a little bit, slowed that right lane down, and the tractor trailer that came out wasn't paying close enough attention and locked them up and, and now has blocked it. Um, so again, let's talk about responder safety. Let's talk about quick clearance and let's talk about communication. Um, so again, you're going to open things up. Um, if you think you're going to be speaking, go ahead and open up your mics. Um, I'll just for this first one, um, the initial dispatch of vehicles, who's dispatching this one and what is being dispatched? Basically, it's going to be a dispatch. If somebody's calling from that side of the Susquehanna River, I'll probably go with Perry County. Perry County will dispatch Duncannon. If it goes to Dauphin County, dispatch will probably be posted over to either Perry County and to 29 Halifax. Anybody disagree with Don's? Expectation? Uh, here in Perry, we'd probably also, for something of this uh, nature, I'm sorry I missed the first couple minutes, but uh, uh, this would also uh, get probably New Buffalo dispatched as well. I think you're going to get PSP right. Likens as well. And P and PS, well, PSP Newport would be dispatched. PSP Newport. Because yeah, the bridge. I know it's funny through here. I I know like or Likens gets the bridge. This is a, this is one of them weird spots. But, uh, <laughs> and right up the road, I always know Newport runs radar out of Red Rabbit. So this is one of them weird spots. I've done yeah. I've done them here both where I've had uh, a representative of each barracks. So I know it can get a little weird here. Well, when I when I was with PSP, this is Rich from Perry. We used to just push things onto the bridge so Likens would come. Fair point. Okay. And true. <laughs> and honest. That's why he's not with PSP anymore. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, 
Sorry, I laughed a little bit while you're talking about that. I have an uncanny ability to put things in places where there may be a question of jurisdiction. I've been able to, I've just done it by accident most of my life. And I wasn't even, I had no idea that we had um, the right side of that photograph being Lichens and the left side of the photograph being Newport. Yeah. Uh, the only thing you missed, Rich, is we've got a we've got a box truck turned over right there above Reacher's gun shop sign on eight forty nine. Uh, which is what? Yeah, which is what caused um, exiting. So we've actually got two vehicles wrecked right there. Um, at this point, it's not real clear, but let's assume we can't get in from the Duncan side. Uh, okay. Are Who they... is nine one one contacting um, from both counties' perspectives? Well, at this point in time, we would have contacted the Traffic Incident Management Center. We would have contacted FEMA, uh, Dauphin County for sure. And uh, actually, that's that little piece right there is Dauphin County. Um, so we would have contacted the, the PennDOT supervisor there that's just up at 11 and 15 as well. Ian. Yeah, the way it breaks down for PennDOT is Dolphin County gets it all the way up to 11 and 15 interchange on 22, 322. And, and uh, then it takes over Perry after that. This would actually fall into stockpile at, uh, at uh, 325 is whose area okay. this would be. Okay, okay not That's... the one there at Amity Hall. No, Amity Hall, that starts Perry. Okay. Not to say that they wouldn't be involved. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah like I, I stated the other day in my email, that all runs all the way up to the, the Cloverleaf, 11, 15, 320, 22 Cloverleaf. And there's Dolphin County till you get on the other side of the Juniata River when you go over 849. <clears throat> being Reed Township, I end up being the EMA coordinator. That will be probably. Mm -hmm. uh, assisted in working in, in trying to get things organized and coordinated with all the agencies involved. Thanks, Don. Um, is this early on in this exercise, are we telling Cumberland County? Uh, we will probably call Cumberland County simply because the volume of traffic that's going to be going down 11 and 15 through uh, Duncannon, Penn Township, and Marysville uh, may have an impact on Cumberland County as well. Also, I would. Where's I the would Cumberland up, Perry, Where's the Cumberland Perry line? Uh, give or take about a mile south of Marysville Borough, maybe half a mile, right at the end of the mountain. So the inter okay, so the interchange is Cumberland County and around the corner and like you just said at the base of the mountain. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah, the other thing, uh, Chuck, it would, it would get passed down the line, middle Paxton, Susquehanna, be notified too about the traffic conditions. Who's gonna get there first? Okay. Duncannon fire for sure, unless PSP's in the area uh, at the time. Correct. How is Duncannon fire going to get to number not, two? Not going to get to the second incident, I don't think. Well, they would they would go uh, north on 1115, hit the interchange there right at the county line, and, and then come east on 322. Of course, request mutual aid for traffic control and uh, and the queue on the on the east side of the crash here. We have not talked about any major injuries are here, so let's not complicate the, the issue. But is traffic control and redirecting traffic the initial, I mean, if we assume we don't have a spill and we don't have a hazmat. What's, what are the initial traffic safety and traffic control issues that we want to take care of? Well, there, there, there's going to be a queue, so we're going to need to, you know, put up the flashing pen dot signs and things like that about the crash there. But, you know, assuming there is no hazmat spill, 
and there is no injuries, it's still going to be uh, a couple hours before they would, they would be able to open up that road, I'm sure. From a PennDOT perspective, in this area where we don't have the best, from a traffic management center perspective, where we don't have the best camera coverage, and it's hard for us to assess these. Now, I got a camera on the other side of the bridge, so maybe we can see it, maybe we can't, whatever. Here for this, especially what Chuck designed here, we're going to need calls of specifically what it is. Because our reaction changes with the severity of this incident. Now, we have all the states. Uh, you messed me mention message boards. We have the state. We can use any board in the state. Should we want to? We just have to know what's needed. So, painting the picture here, for us, especially through your your nine one one. However, you contact us, it doesn't really matter. But exactly what you're saying is it overturned? Is it a fatality? Those types of things. So we can gauge where we want to redirect people from at what distance. So that for us, that's what we need to know here. Um, let me go back and then I'm going to ask Dean Hooper to step in here. Uh, let me go back and say, if we all know what the normal eastbound 22, 322 exit is, and that is going down 11 and 15 through Marysville, um, Who's going to close that roadway since technically it's right at that, you know, uh, as Marcus just said, Dauphin goes all the way to the interchange. That's correct. And Amity Hall. Would it be Amity Hall? Yeah, uh, the uh, 22322 eastbound traffic, if we did close it down at 11 to 15, it would, it would actually be, probably be Perry County PennDOT is who yeah. Ninety nine out of ten times is Perry County Penn. Right, they're closer, and since we can't necessarily get there from the three twenty five stockpile because traffic's backed up across the bridge now, yes. um, is that I don't know if that's wide enough right there where I put the two that we can get around it. It's it would have to be wide. land just and right to close it, that down. It's pretty wide that? roadway. It's pretty wide roadway okay. right through there. So. Uh, for argument's sake. Yeah, we have, yeah, we have closed the roadway, but I mean, the Riviera already got hit by that plane, so you don't want to like drive a car into it, but. Um, <laughs> all right, um, so you're gonna shut them down probably using that. Um, Dean, if you got there with fire police, um, what are the issues that you see in on scene of those two? Well, my, my greatest concern would be you've got uh, highway, you got all four lanes shut down. You've got traffic coming in both directions at probably 70 mile an hour. Uh, you get a backup of probably uh, every two minutes, maybe a mile of traffic every three minutes. I would think early warning is critical. I would think you'd have to send somebody upstream on uh, 22, 322 in each direction and get some signage up that there's an incident up ahead. Thanks. Is that the kind of thing, Marcus, that you could, that we could plan? Uh, yeah. Uh, just so everybody's aware, us as District 8, which encompasses Perry County, we have two message boards uh, coming eastbound on 22-322 that would already be active. From the moment we heard something was happening, we would have been running messages on those message boards just to, hey, just even though we're not sure what it is, hey, incident at generally this location, you know, watch for stop traffic, that type of thing. So you would already have um, message boards 10 miles back. Because we'd pick this up on the scanner already. We'd already have an inkling something's happening. Um, what, about what about additional? That's what I was side. talking about. Uh, that's what I was talking about. Toward, I don't know if you mean static or DMS here. What are you talking about, Chuck? Right. Well, stat static, is that something that, that the 325 stockpile could be bringing in? And yeah, dropping? chances are we're not going to do that. We're not going to send out. This is this is more incident management than I, I'll call it uh, your pub 13 temporary traffic control. So for right now, you know, if, it, if it went on to be a very long incident, then we'd start thinking about, hey, how can we 
push this towards being in compliance with pub 213 but for the most part it's traffic it's incident management crash trucks crew cabs message boards that type of thing the other thing truck will be how many signs do you have going go ahead don the other thing will be chuck would over on the east side and we're going to have to try to get traffic up and turn it around come back down on the uh the eastbound side. So again, that's going to be a heavy traffic control point there at 147 and the entrance to the to the bridge from that area too. Yeah, you know, to control and try to get better control also down at 325 and 322. They're right by the the PennDOT shack and probably get some traffic turn around there mm -hmm. too. Yeah, you know, I put some thought into this, uh, Don, uh, yesterday when me and Chuck were talking about it, what we would do. And it is that, that 147, it's not like you can turn a tractor trailer in it around in there very easily. So with that being said, I don't think you can shut it down anywhere else either. It, it has to be at the closure point here because you have to allow tra traffic up to Halifax. So if they make it that far, they're kind of on their own. They're just going to go up to Halifax. Yes. But what we would do on the other side, we would be running every message, every northbound or westbound message board from the Maryland line, be it 83, 15, uh, 81, or anything coming out of Lancaster heading west, we would be running message boards, don't go this way. So if they made it here, that's on them. So they get to go see Halifax is, is how I think we would look at it from the traffic management center. Because- Yes, the, I, I agree with that. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, there's not a lot we can do. It, it's just a tough interchange to turn a tractor trailer around. And, and you got it. So. Uh, let me volunteer another idea here. I'm not, we have all four lanes blocked. I don't know how soon one lane could be freed up where you could run a taper and start to move traffic on and through. That's another consideration. That's a discussion with the command post. Yeah, I didn't think we were that far ahead yet. So I didn't, I didn't suggest if there's no other extenuating circumstance, you know, hooking up that truck and pulling it open a lane or two, but I didn't think we we're that far ahead. Well, the biggest, yeah, that'd be the biggest problem is trying to get just one lane open, even once the record crew shows up in that, uh, they're gonna have a hard time trying to even maneuver around in that area. Uh, I'm gonna let me ask this. Let me ask this question of Dean. And anybody else that's done close-up traffic control? What are the other issues that you have um, in terms of interacting with the motorists who are trapped between 11 and 15 in this and this scene? Um, and how are you interacting with them? If this is wide enough and we can get people around it, that's fine. But well, what are you doing to get that? what we call a trap queue, it's not a trap, but whoever can put into that queue so that we can move them around. Um, I'll say the, the, oh, well, okay. the eastbound traffic shouldn't be an issue. We spin, that's plenty wide there. If they're stuck on the bridge, on the other hand, that's a little more difficult because it's not, if you get a tractor trailer in there, it's not like you're going to spin him around quickly. Cars, sure, maybe we can do it. That's not an issue. We may run into some issues with the uh, westbound trucks on the bridge, but there's plenty of room to spin anything around up there by through the pilot or through the sheets parking lot. That eastbound shouldn't be an issue. Yeah, westbound, even, possibly. It, 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 would not, it would not be an issue if we had it blocked off and uh, traffic rerouted south on 11 and 15. Um, and then the queue in between 11 and 15 and the, the new rudders store there uh the roadway is wide enough there that you know you could slowly relieve that queue that's stuck between 11 and 15 and the clark's ferry bridge by turning them and going northbound and then directing them south so refresh my memory isn't that a solid barrier in there no uh, only till you get the rudders yeah. after rudders it's after rudders between between at the end of rudders parking lot is where that stops the wall stops okay somebody so mentioned a while ago about turning around and pilot and i'm thinking well that doesn't do you any good because you can't get back out again and cross over no you can't they can you got well, enough room you got well, enough room also on the, 
on the west side of 322, those big parking lots along there, even to swing them. And there are probably people who are willing to wait it out if they see it, and there really are only going to the other side, and they don't want to back up, go around, and spend 45 minutes for, for something. And again, they'll probably be reacting um, to however quickly somebody can tell them we've got a heavy record coming or a record to be able to push that and, and get some traffic moving. Dean, how many people do you need? How many fire police do you need for this? Um, to do what? Total number. <laughs> it's, usually, it's usually the other way if, around. If you're, handling mo if you're handling most of the traffic, all right? How many people do you need to work this scene, help turn traffic, and those kinds of things? Worst case scenario. Well, I'm, I'm, already, I'm still thinking about the early warning upstream and detouring traffic, for instance, uh, detouring them down 11 and 15. Uh, if I can shut down the flow there, I got to have someone doing that. Then, I, then on scene, we've either got to back people up or turn them around or have them stay parked. That's always a a consideration that generally takes about two more people. Um, then you're then you go across the river and you say, what do I need to do over there? So that sounds like two more people. To, I, I'd say at least five people are required here. Um, Don Shut, how many fire police would you expect to show up on scene here? And from where would they be coming? Most of the people you're probably going to get is out of Halifax, and that's roughly about two or three people. Uh, I would have to probably request and go out farther to uh, Nolensburg and Fisherville for their fire police to help control. Uh, I'm not sure what Dun Cannon has for fire police, how many they, they have in that. That was my next question. How many do they have? Because they can certainly walk in um, if they have to. Um, okay. Case you guys didn't see it, uh, Rich Fultz has, has um, had to take a call and he's not back yet. I don't think. Um, hey, uh, Chuck, said, I'm not... hey, Chuck, yeah. it's Marcus. Could I have control for a second? I'm like, well, I got the guys here, so I, I, I have the ability to share. It, can I share a screen with you guys? <laughs> you already have. It looks like I believe you can. <laughs> we should be good to go if you just go to the share screen at the bottom. Share screen at the bottom. All right, here we go. This, can you guys see my camera? Uh, yeah. Make sure you're sharing the appropriate screen. All right, it's, it's highlighted in blue. I feel like it's right. Yeah, I'm All right, right. Here, here we go. How about now? Yep. You see the camera? Yep. Yeah. All right, this is right here. The rudders is just off to the uh, left here. This is the interchange of 11. This is how the TMC would view this. This is through our eyes. And, you know, I'll spin it here. We'll look southbound. All right, sorry. Right. My presets are backwards. Hold on. So this is how the TMC views the world. And we're just lucky to have this one here. We also have one at the other end of the bridge. As you can see, the pilots right here. Uh, Chuck's accidents up in this general area over here. And then... The TMC, just to give you an idea, again, how we're looking at it, and, and a lot goes with this, with lighting message boards. Yeah, just bear with me for a second. Let me find a camera I want. Here is the other side of the bridge. So, again, we can see, but you're, that Chuck's incident's way over on the other side here. You can see good fishing spots right in here. Of course, Chuck knows all about that. And uh, this, again... This is how we would see what you're doing, how we would relay what we're seeing from fire police getting out there, shutting down 22, 320 uh, east or westbound. We would find you here. And this is just, I just wanted to share this with you to know that Big Brother is watching. Hold on, I uh, will stop sharing. I'm getting a phone call. I will talk to you guys in a minute. Yeah. He's getting a phone call wondering why he's spinning those cameras. <laughs> That's very helpful, though. <laughs> that yeah, that's that's awesome. Um, I believe that's the first time I've actually seen the Gemini Tech controls of the cameras working. Uh, 
Um, and that, again, but that's I, just how we view. Uh, sorry about that. I had to take that. Actually, it was a telemarketing. But uh, um, oh. that's how we see it. That's how we know what you guys are doing. And that's why I wouldn't so much worry about the message boards if it's on a major route. Uh, and this falls into our core network. The traffic management center is aware of it, probably on your tap. Now, if you get some oddball thing, it, maybe we miss one hair there and we're a little late, but chances are we're going to know because it's core network. We're going to get alerts that there's slowdowns in traffic, uh, let alone the uh, the taps for, for fire or PSP or whoever. So I wouldn't get too caught up in the message boards. They will be running. So, Marcus, uh, okay. I, I understand uh, what you – sorry, go ahead. No, no, go ahead, Dean. Yeah, I understand you, you have a good visibility of 322 there from both sides of the river. What happens with Route 15? What happens with uh, – Route 15 uh, is a viable detour, and we've used it multiple times, and it can handle the traffic, especially coming – uh, westbound or eastbound, I'm sorry, on 322 because you, you go right into it's technically two lane limited access. Now, coming up from 81 through Marysville, it's a different game. It, you have a stoplight there, it doesn't flow quite as well. And we actually see backups on 81 should this be at a peak time of the day. So, uh, there's things we can do to mitigate that as well with talking with Marysville, putting, you know, Marysville uh, uh, PD will actually go out and put their signal on flash for us to assist us with this. And uh, other little caveats that come into play here that you guys probably don't ever hear about is there's actually a truck restriction. 48 foot is the restriction on trucks to the town of Marysville or the borough of Marysville, whatever it's called. And it, it has to be lifted by PennDOT for these, for when we shut down 22, 322. So there, there are some things, and there's actually even a school zone there. We've had it where it's been an issue where uh, Sesquanita schools up through there. Should this happen at, uh, you know, a Tuesday at seven o'clock, it becomes a real issue through a 15 mile an hour school zone when you're trying to reroute freeway uh, uh, traffic volumes through a school zone. It just doesn't work well. So uh, you know, there's there's tons of little caveats there. 11 and 15. You just kind of, we, we don't really have a lot of recourses from a PennDOT perspective on it other than putting the light on flash and lifting the restriction. So to answer your question, it's not a lot we can do. That's another issue, Chuck, that has to be looked at because there are students from Susquehanna that have to go across that bridge that live in Reed Township. Mm. So if it's happened during that time where school bus is going to be needing to bring students over Dolphin County Reed Township. It's going to have to be planned to bring them another way. Uh, I, I think you may be getting a little too much into, especially with school. It, school buses can be a really touchy thing, especially when you get into the realm of Pima. Uh, for that, I, I feel that the kids are going to be late, but it, it's kind of an is what it is thing from from PennDOT. How's that? I'll say from I ain't going to speak for anybody else. Hey, Marcus. From an EMA perspective, from county EMA perspective, who's telling the school district, who, well, one, in advance, who knows that they have to worry about a bus route or two coming out of Susquehanna and going across the Clarks Ferry Bridge? Who knows, who knows about that? And who's going to take responsibility for at least alerting the school district that the buses, if they try to use that route, we're going to have a problem. Let's just assume it's Rich Fultz because he's still on a call, I think. But uh, I, was just, I was just going to say that'll be all be rich because that's all Perry County side. So um, that would be all rich or the, I know in like my jurisdiction, I have, I have phone count contacts for uh, the Lower Dolphin, um, I don't know what you want to call him, communications guy. And when we close roads in our township, um, we make it a point to call him and let him know the, these roads are closed so they can get it out to their bus drivers. Thanks, Bart. Where is the, where is the, um, 
where's the trigger point from a Cumberland County and Dauphin County 911 perspective? Uh, where's the trigger point when you get a expected, you know, length of the closure as far duration of the closure? Where's the trigger point to contact school districts? Is it, is it always let them know up front they could, you know, it could be a problem? Let's say this happens at uh, 1 30 p.m. So we're within 90 minutes of the school district needing to use those routes. Um, what are the trigger points in, in, we can ask Rich when he comes back, but what are the trigger points now in Dauphin and Cumberland County, or are there any? Per se, I, would Rich think, I would think, um, as from the EMC point, I would have to notify Dauphin and ask them to do the notifications to the school districts and the technical school uh, that there's a, you know, a traffic jam on 22, 322. Traffic is uh, sluggish. Um, as it's going to Cumberland County, it's another request I, I could ask Dolphin to do or Perry County. Bart, did you have an answer on that? Or Michelle? Yeah, I was going to say, it, is, there a, is there a true written mechanism and trigger point? Probably not. I However, don't think so. yeah, yeah. However, uh, there is usually, I know Michelle's online. She's the one talk. She wants me to do a whole talking, I guess. Um, <clears throat> I know we try to do it on our side through uh, WebEOC. The notification process of you know any incident occurring in there in that, that municipality we try to at least trigger down to the local emc so the local emcs you know may have folks that they want to to contact and i would agree that it's a local issue but i think it would have to be a very lengthy delay to contact school districts and, and tell them their buses have to be rerouted or whatever i think that becomes a whole another issue All right part of the reason why we do exercises michelle you're gonna i'm gonna hear michelle i'm gonna shut up just go ahead and talk i like hearing you chuck i'm learning a lot from listening to you guys um, from, from our perspective for this particular scenario um, if our supervisor in 911 hasn't already made the assumption to do so um, I would either redirect him or her or take on the task myself at a minimum to notify Cumberland Perry Votech um, because this would definitely impact them. Um, I, I'd be looking to Rich and Bart and his crew to figure out what their timeline is for the impediment. That way I could let the school district know as soon as possible. Um, that way they would have time to notify their drivers because uh, as, as y'all said, it, it can be a lengthy process getting a hold of people. So we want to give them as much notification as we possibly can. Um, our normal protocol is uh, our supervisor or our EMA staff can reach out to one or more school district direct by picking up the phone and uh, using our resource manual to contact the correct person. Um, we also have a, a safe school officer that represents uh, in our EOC for all the school districts. Um, at a minimum, if we don't use him as the conduit to notify the schools, he at least gets a courtesy email and or phone call to make sure he's aware um, because he's a subject matter expert that knows how school districts operate. So if he might think of a cascading effect that we don't, um, that's why we use him and keep him in the loop so he can maintain that continuity, if you would. So we try to give him one center a lot of flexibility for these notifications. Um, not to wait on us that if they have a question, should they? The, the answer is, yeah, go ahead. Um, it's better to over notify than to not notify at all. And, and then we have to answer a bunch of questions. Michelle. Hey, sir. You're, you're just an overachiever. That's all. Not me, my staff. I'm, I'm very blessed with my staff. They, they tell me the answers to give you. My internet connection is unstable. I'm just warning you. Um, so it would be possible that let's just stay over there on that side of the river. It'd be possible that Cedar Cliff wants to know one hour ahead of a problem 
where another school might want to know 90 minutes so that they might have specific um, planning needs that we're not completely aware of, but somebody might say, you let me know as soon as possible, no matter what, and then can come back and say, Cedar Cliff says, I need to know by 2.35 because my first buses will leave at that time. Yeah, for, for Cumberland, we don't follow that. We One and all, whenever we know, we, we notify you because their schedules can change every day with, with field trips when they're regular sessions. So um, for them to actually have a schedule as to when they need to be notified by, we, we just don't have the ability to adhere to that since we don't have control over the incident or when we get the information ourselves. So we, we do our best to notify them. Sometimes they're happy, sometimes they're not. Just so you all know, I'm shaking my head because I couldn't get ahead of Michelle again, but since I turned my camera off, I'm shaking my head over here. Um, I know we had two, let's see, there was a question there. Marcus, did you see the question that came in from Art? Marcus is still away. When you talk about collecting slow traffic, will that come from any highway or only certain highways? Um, if he comes back, we can ask that question. Uh, Rich, are you back? All right, I got two more questions and one of them is where's the command post? Where's the most likely location for a command post here? Or will there be one in Dauphin and one in Perry? There would be a split between the two uh, working as a unified somewhat of command in that to deal with it. Uh, definitely, you would have to have somebody on the east side of the Clark Ferry Bridge to really reserve what's going on and controlling from that side. Hopefully, somebody over in Perry County side, uh, somewhat upstream, probably around Pilot, taking a better view of uh, overview of things. If you're responsible for the whole region, Don, you're more likely to go to the Halifax side of the bridge? I would, but I would like to be more face to face with the Perry County side and that uh, make sure we have good communications uh, with both counties as what our plans are and, and working mm -hmm. with uh, Duncan and Fire and Buffalo, see how we're going to resolve getting at least one lane open and some traffic moving and how long we're going to be there. And that's one of the things I would say that once instant command shows up on the scene, they should try to get a good size up of how long this is going to take. And then at that point, that should really be trans transmitted to the schools uh, at that point, telling them, hey, you know, it's going to be a good four hours until we get anything opened up. I'm going to be the optimist. I want to. I want it to be a whole lot less than four hours. So, if you guys can help answer me questions, well, I would say that I think we're getting a little too far in the weeds with, with like notifying schools. Um, ideally speaking, if we're working concurrently here, we should have pen down out here in an hour. We should have a tow out here in an hour. Hopefully, you already got everybody cleared out of the vehicles that needed medical attention. We should be assessing this for uh, the easiest, quickest way to clean up. I, we're getting into notifying schools. We don't know. I, I, I would say this, there's no way this incident should ideally go longer than four hours. And buses should be able to figure it out how to get to a school before that. Um, this might be an example of you need to bring the tow truck. You're going to bring all the tow trucks in from Perry County? I'm going to guess this would be River Drive, just in my previous experiences. You guys up Perry County Way may know somebody different, but my experience, this is River Drive. They're right off of Front Street on 322, or 22-322, and uh, they got all the equipment needed. there. Does anyone know who the closest decent-sized wrecker is back in that Duncannon area? Is there somebody in Duncannon? Isn't there a guy, a trucking or a towing service just north of Newport or New Buffalo? 
there is somebody up there, and I don't know their name, but this is gonna again gonna be PSP Newport. I'm I'm guessing their list is gonna consist of River Drive and probably maybe an H and S or an H and J, but they're coming from further away. I'm, they would come out for this because they, you know, they have that shop up in Perry County, so they could come down as well. Thank you. Another one probably will, another closest one will probably be Kiner's out of Halifax. Yeah. Just wanted to start talking about it. Um, we get, normally will preach you contact the towing company as soon as you possibly can uh, in this entire effort so that you can get them mobile and especially if they have to come a longer distance that that's kind of wasted time. Are we good for now? Get a few things out of it. Let's go ahead and try to finish up. I do appreciate that was terrific stuff. Appreciate it very much. Go ahead. Those are just some of the questions. Um, pen time update, Mr. Lease. Oh, Todd went away. Todd, can you unmute? I can't believe I said that. Pen time meeting that was scheduled for last. Oh, there he is. There you go. Yeah. Uh, did they pen time meeting tomorrow? Can you guys hear me okay? Yeah, you're breaking up a little bit. Yeah. Sorry. Your laptop. Can you hear me better? Nope. Nope. Okay. Well, this is what I got. So. Okay. Uh, next right. time meeting is tomorrow from one to three. Hopefully uh, everybody could make it. If you need an invite, feel free to reach out to me at my email address there, tlisapaturnpike.com, and we will get you on the invite list. It's a, uh, available by phone. Uh, we should have a good meeting. We should be talking about the I-80 after action review from their mass casualty incident up there, as well as how we're starting to track secondary crashes in Pennsylvania. So we have a lot of good topics. March 27th at the Mannheim Auto Auction over in Mannheim on Route 72. We're going to be doing a large video shoot uh, to promote the, the move over law, which goes into effect. The new law goes into effect in April 27th. So that's Saturday, March 27th. We will be doing a, a, uh, a big video shoot over there, probably starting at 10 o'clock in the morning. So hopefully we'll have a lot of fire, EMS towing, and police participation. So if you're interested in that, please contact me as well. Todd, quick question about that move over law. It, it, what's changing in this one? They added a slowdown component to it. Which, okay. Right. So the slowdown component, they changed it from steer clear to move over. They're doubling all the fines. So the first fine is $500. Second is 1000 Third is 2000 Uh Additionally, if you injure a responder, it's, an, it's, it's a ten thousand dollar fine as well. It also has a if you are a, a, a passenger vehicle or a, a civilian vehicle and you break down on the side of the roadway, if you put your four ways on and an additional traffic safety device, meaning a flare, triangles, a sign saying you're broken down, that's also covered under the move over law. So there's an, an extra component to that as well. Uh, so. Okay, cool, thank you. Yep. I think that's it, Chuck. I'm muted, yes, I'm muted. Um, thanks, <laughs> thanks, Todd, I look forward to tomorrow. <clears throat> uh, we can go ahead and advance one more. <clears throat> Does anybody have any ideas on training for Mark? March 9th, other than um, my recommendation was that we haven't done much on, on instant command, instant command post selection, um, unified command concepts. Anybody got any other ideas? Yeah, Chuck, we, we are making great progress on the unified command uh, program that we're working on through Penn Time. So uh, we'd, we'd love to be able to share some of that information out there as well. Uh, I participated in the after action review from the I-80 crash, and the one thing they did not do well, like happens in most uh, large-scale incidents, is uh, there was no instant command at all for this or no command post set up uh, because everybody was in a panic because it was a large-scale incident that spanned two counties. So I think that's a, a great topic uh, to discuss for a, a meeting. 
Unfortunately, we have a need to do the expanded unified command and, and focus on instant command because while everyone has completed the course, um, it's still one of the toughest things to do is to just establish a specific spot. And, uh, it's done really well at certain times and not at all in other times, as Todd just said. Not intent. Anyway, anybody's ideas of, at any time, um, planning at TCRPC, PA, sorry, hyphen PA.org, um, we'll get you there or give me a call, whatever you want to do. But, hey, uh, hey, Chuck, this is Todd. One more thing. If anybody's interested, we're selling 10 time move over law challenge coins. So if you want to pre order one of those or $15 a piece, I could send you the information. Just reach out to me as well. Again, they're pre-order for right now, but any extra money, they're $15 a piece, but any extra money raised will go towards getting uh, move over awareness items. So we'll say you pen time, the pen time logo on the one side and a move over logo on the other side. So, Can you share that link information with Kyle Snyder, please, so that he can get it out to everyone? Yeah, if uh, we have it on the, if you go to the pen time uh, website, uh, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll give it to okay, Kyle. That's fine. I'll send it to Kyle. Yep, no okay. problem. I'll send it to Kyle. All right, Thanks, again, Kyle. Kyle's, Kyle's going to be sending out the uh, the schedule for the year as well. Yep. Um, again, some people didn't get it. Are we good? I really do appreciate. Thanks. Our, I really do appreciate everyone's time. Um, in particular, uh, we had a lot of the usual suspects, but it's good to see Dean Hooper's face again. Didn't think I'd ever say that, buddy. Wow, now, Don, funny. I would not have said that. <laughs> anyway, bless you all. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Keep in touch. Take care. Thanks. Thanks, all. Everyone. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks.